Welcome. It's another edition of the Stripe Show podcast, Froggy Wednesday here. Welcome to 2022. Had a great year here on the podcast in 2021, and we are starting off 2022 with somebody I tried to get on a couple times last year, and he's been super busy doing all kinds of stuff, and he is playing this week in the American Express Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for your time. It's John Pack, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, Froggy, I'm, I'm really excited. Thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate it, man. So uh, an amazingly decorated college career, the 2021 winner of the Haskins, the Ben Hogan, and the Jack Nich Nicholas Awards. In case you're wondering, that's pretty much every award that they give out for college golf. You won all three of them in one season. Has that been done before? Um, honestly, yeah, I don't know the, the answer to that. But uh, yeah, I was, I was very honored to win those three awards. And, uh, you know, being at Florida State was probably the best four years of my life so far. So yeah, I'm honored to be the three recipients of those awards. It really is an amazing uh, college career. You can see uh, here, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see we've got his handle on Instagram at johnnydpack98 on Instagram. Make sure you uh, reach out to John there. But, I mean, it had to be you, you're you at Florida State for four years, have an amazing career. I think you set the scoring record at Florida State, if I'm not mistaken. And you're talking guys like Brooks Kapka, Daniel Berger. Paul Azinger, there's been a lot of really good players that go through Florida State, and you set the scoring record there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that it means so much to me. Um, you know, Trey Jones, the coach out there, he does a fantastic job. You see, you know, the, one of the main reasons I went there is you see all these players that he gets, you know, Brooks, Daniel, they were they were good their freshman year. They were good in uh, in high school, but the progression they have through the four, four years is incredible. You know, he, he knows how to make a – a great great player even better yeah i mean it's unbelievable what's been done there but to set the scoring record really says something and then you, you get out on tour and and let's be honest we'll call it like it is at first it's been a little bit of a struggle i know you made your first cut and then you missed uh six cuts in a row last year what did you learn from getting out on tour and having that little bit of a rough start yeah um i wasn't prepared um, I was pretty tired after the college season and I took some time off between, you know, national championship and, and my pro debut. I, I had maybe, maybe about a week there and I didn't practice. I was so burnt out. And, you know, I, I gotta be honest, I just wasn't prepared and the game wasn't there. And I think I, I learned that I'm, I'm good enough to compete against these guys when my game's on, I think mm -hmm. I could, you know, definitely compete against these guys at the top level, but just got to be honest, the game just wasn't there last year. Just wasn't playing great. And it uh, feels a lot better right now. I had, you know, the off season to work on, work on my game. And, uh, you know, I feel pretty prepared this week. So, you know, I just got to go out there and sh show up, you know. What's been the biggest surprise so far that maybe you thought something was one way on the PGA Tour and you have now realized that it's completely different than what you thought? Um, I think it's just – the competition level between college and, and professional golf, I think the highest level people don't realize the highest level of college and amateur golf is not quite as good, but like, you know, it's comparable. Cause think about it. My sophomore year, I was playing against Matt Wolf, Colin Morikawa and Victor Hovland and look what they're doing right now. So the competition level is there and it's just that transition period. You just got to learn how to, you know, find the ins and outs of the PGA tour and kind of, kind of figure out what works best for you. So you get there and you get on tour. Have you had that for lack of a better term? Have you had that? Oh shit moment yet? Like I'm really here. I'm playing on the PGA tour. Yeah, no, I definitely did. After I made my first cut and I was just standing over this, I had a birdie putt at, uh, the, uh, the Stableford tournament. And, uh, God, I forgot the name of it. Is it Barracuda? But, Not the Barracuda. Barracuda. Yeah, Barracuda. Barracuda. Barracuda, sorry. Yeah, flanked on that. And I had a putt on the 18th hole about an 18 foot, and I was like, oh, shit, this is for, like, if I make this putt, that's, like, 10 grand right there. And I've I've never, ever experienced that kind of, you know, feeling before. You know, I've played with some buddies for a couple, you know, 20 bucks. I, I, I never was a big gambler. And right. I was just sitting there on 18, and I was, like, looked at my cat, and I was like, I just thought to myself, and you know, I've never been in that situation. I was like, yeah, right. dude, there, there's a lot of money on this putt right here. Did you make it? No, I missed it. <laughs> it was like it was like 20 feet, and it was like uphill, right to left, and barely missed it. And yeah, it's just just the thought of that. I was like, oh wow, this is pretty cool. 
John, how old were you when it registered that, you know what, I'm, I'm good enough at this game to play on tour? Um, probably not till my freshman year of, uh, of college. Really? You know, I knew, I knew I was good in high school, but, you know, just, it's, it's hard to say you're good enough for the PGA Tour because these guys are really, really good. And it's when I, you know, I won on college, I won in college, and then um, I think I was a third, second or third team All American, and I was like, you know, if I if I keep progressing every year, getting a little bit better, I think I could I could get there. And uh, you know, I, as the years went on, I I got a little bit a little bit better. What did you do to get better? And and not only that, let's let's take this in steps. In college, what did you do to get better to, to, to make your game to take you from one level to the next? I think the biggest thing is working on the right things. When I was in high school, I practiced damn near close to like eight hours a day, eight, nine hours a day. And I would just beat balls and, you know, I wouldn't work on the right things. When I got to college, I realized that I always beat myself up on putting. I thought I wasn't a good putter, but when you're hitting as many greens as I was and not making, you know, 20 footers, you think you're putting bad, but you just have a lot more chances. So that was another thing I worked on my game mentally. And then I worked on my wedge game significantly. You, you make all your scoring clubs are from, you know, 80 to 120 yards. I, for a guy that doesn't hit as far, I put myself in par fives from 80 to 120 yards. I have to be good from that yardage. I have to make birdie. So I worked on that a lot. And I think people don't realize how big of a mental game golf is. So that's something I worked on a lot. You know, I worked with a, a mental coach in, uh, in college. His name was uh, Brett McCabe. And yeah. I, pl- I, I worked on the, with I played with the mindset that, you know, it's not the end of the world if I don't hit a great shot. You know, it, it, you can't put so much pressure on yourself to hit perfect shots all the time. And I think that's a lot of golfers have an issue with that. So I, I kind of play with the mindset, shake it off, you know, hit the next shot. It's, it's all a process on the next shot. Right. You know, a, a lot of people do think that, and, and I know that I've had the same thought as well, that man, the pros hit it perfect every time. What would you say in a, in a, say in a, in, a, in an, in an 18 hole round where you shoot one or two under par, how many perfect shots do you hit? in an 18 hole round where you hit it exactly the way you wanted exact same distance, right where you're looking. Uh, maybe one or two. Right. Yeah. Right. If that, I mean, right. No and there's times you don't shot. hit any, correct? Yeah, for sure. I mean, right. if you're thinking perfect, it's gotta be perfect. Right. <laughs> be and that doesn't hole. happen. So it, it just never. Yeah. But it's you making gotta, sure that you're not perfect is good enough where you can still score. You can get her on the golf exactly. course and you can put the last shot behind you and move on to the next shot. Exactly. I think one of the strengths of my game is that my miss hits are pretty good. You know, I don't, if I hit a bad drive, it's still, you know, maybe right rough and that's as bad as it gets. And that's, that's the important part. You know, if you hit it 30, 20 yards, right, you might hit it in trouble. So you got miss hits are so important. You just got to make sure your miss hits aren't big. So you make those changes, you get better in high school. What are the changes that have been most important as you have started your career on the PGA tour? What are the biggest things that you've had to work on from last season, this off season, as you prepare for the MX and, and moving on further this year? Um, I kind of just worked on everything. I, like I told you in the summer, my game was just not good. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't practicing. I was playing a lot because you know, I, I was fortunate to get, you know, six starts in the summer and it was just golf, 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 you know, wasn't able to grind and work on my game. And I'm a, I'm a pretty big practicer. I like to work practice a lot. So I didn't have that time to work on my game. And, you know, I just, that's what I did during this off season, worked on my swing. Don't really have to do many swing changes because I'm at a point in my swing with my coach where it's just maintenance work. So I did a lot of that, worked on my short game and, um, yeah, I'm just getting ready for the season, just tidying things up. What swing changes have you made? Have you made some little tweaks here and there? Maybe you, cause I know a lot um, of times some guys say that, you know, they, they play bad for a little while and before they know what they look, it's a setup. It's, they've been setting up wrong. It's just a setup change. I mean, like you just have the no idea. Thing. 
Has that happened you to you? No, that's literally always the issue in my swing. Like right now, I'm trying to push into my left foot a little bit. My, so I get loaded into the top of my back swing and try to push into the left side of my, you know, my transition, try to push into my left forefoot. Mm-hmm. And right now, I'm struggling to do that. I just start twisting early and I don't load into that side and then explode up. And it's easy for me to do that when my feet are a little closed. But, you know, yesterday my feet were slightly open. And when I push in and spin, I just yank everything. So it's just something that small. If I just square up my feet, it's so much easier to do that move. And people don't realize that it's just so, I'm literally moving my left foot two inches forward and I'm hitting it miles better. And it's it, no one realizes that. Right. It really is unbelievable. Now, do you, when, when something starts going wrong, uh, in a, in a tournament, I know that fixing it in the middle of a round is difficult. Obviously something your caddy can look at and say, Hey, I see you're doing this or I see you're doing that. But yeah. do you talk to your coach in between rounds when you're playing PGA tour events to go, Hey, I'm struggling. And maybe there's something they can see that's something simple. No, I don't. Um, I kind of just try to just work with what I'm, what I got. If I'm in <laughs> like a, like a pole draw, I, I aim a little more right. <laughs> you can't, I don't think that'll take, that takes, you know, a couple, at least a week for me to feel comfortable working on something before I can take it out to the course. So if I'm, if I'm hitting a little pole, I'm just aiming a little more right. <laughs> So you, you remind me a little bit. I don't know if you've ever seen this. There's a video. Uh, Tiger Woods and Anthony Kim were doing a, a session talking to some guys. And Tiger's talking about how he does this, this, and this. And it's all technical, and it makes a lot of sense. And then and he, he says, what about you, Anthony? Anthony Kim goes, man, I just go to the range and see if I'm hitting a cut that day or if I'm hitting a draw. And whatever I'm hitting, that's what I'm going to play for the whole round. And I'm like, it's like that? Like, that's what I do when I go to the golf course? But are you kind of the same thing where – if you're hitting a cut that day, you're just going to play a cut? No. It, so I don't hit a cut. If I just need to hit a big overdraw. That's my issue when, I, when I'm not hitting it good. So I you just start a, aiming a little more a right. Hook. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to see like a two-yard draw. And then every once in a while, I start, I, get, I start pulling it a little bit instead of starting it a little right. So it's just like a straight shot, and it's just drawing. Right. So that's my issue. So I just start aiming a little more right. <laughs> Which isn't a good fix because no. you, you end up doing more. But, you know, when you're playing in a tournament, you're not really thinking about trying to fix something. You're trying to just score. Yeah, that's another thing, too. Is I think amateurs get into where they've got too many swing thoughts. Standing over a ball and they've got this thought it's set up and <clears throat> this thought in the backswing and this thought in the down. It's like too many swing thoughts. You're, you're not playing golf anymore. You're playing golf swing. Yes, I, that's very true. I try to keep it very simple. And I maximum two swing thoughts really and for me me it's usually my waggle so like when i when i set up to a golf ball i always do a couple waggles kind of, not like jason duffner everyone always remembers jason duffner taking a bunch of waggles right. but yeah me it's just one waggle it's for me to not get so rotational from the start of my swing just to get the club going back and then right now i'm just thinking about being patient on my downswing and not rotating too early right i know you're playing this week in the amex and you uh, had some practice rounds yesterday you probably got a, a pro-am going on today first tournament rounds tomorrow what's the golf course playing like is it is it is it playing to your strengths yeah i uh i think it's so there's three different golf courses <laughs> oh and uh, yeah yeah i don't know because it don't used to be that. two right i think it used to be two and they've added a third I'm not, I, I've always, I've always been told it's been three. I okay. don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a rookie out here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so the PGA West, I guess that's the main one. Cause they play the Sunday final round out there. It's playing, mm-hmm. it plays pretty well for my game. You know, you gotta hit, you gotta hit the fairway and that's one of my strong points. And then, um, you gotta be good off the off on your pro shots. It's just very flat green. So if you hit it good off the tee and you put yourself in a scoring position, it's not very tough around the greens. So I think that's that plays perfectly into my game because I'm a born golfer. I hit the fairway, I hit the green, and I try to two or one putt. 
that's kind of always been my game. And I think this course kind of suits me perfectly because, you know, um, I'll, I'll probably I'll do my best to keep the ball in the fairways and then just kind of an iron shot into the green. And the greens aren't too complex and tricky. The only issue is they're extremely firm. So like a four iron for me is releasing eight to nine yards. We did some testing on the greens. Yeah, then a wedge shot's a full wedge is still releasing like a yard or two. Wow. Not nothing's ripping back. So that's the one thing I've, I've got to be careful about is just making sure I pick out precise numbers and landing spots. And, and I think I'll be good. Now, John, how important is, is distance to you? I know you made a comment earlier that you're not a super long hitter, but there seems to be all this talk. There's, you know, obviously the talk around Bryson. And I know this week, yeah. uh, I believe uh, Dupree's is playing this week and he supposedly hits it further than Bryson. Is does. that the guy that's six foot 10? I saw a guy on the range that's six yes. foot 10. I was like, who is that guy? He's yeah. His massive. name is, uh, his name is, uh, hold on. I'll tell you. His last name is Dupree's. His first name. Uh-huh. I've got his uh, name here. Hold on a second. His first name is James. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, we saw him on the race. Yeah, James Hart He's Dupree's. Huge. His swing speed is 140 miles per hour. His okay. ball speed's over 200, like 202. His average drive last year on the Sunshine Tour was over 370. So, golf, I mean, there's Not no bad. doubt we have moved into an era of hitting the ball as far as you can. There's mm-hmm. absolutely no doubt. But guys like Colin Morikawa have shown the hitting it as far as you can is not necessarily the key to winning. He's been able to win some pretty big tournaments and win at a great clip by hitting it straight. So is distance something you've ever chased? Have you ever thought about distance or are you happy with the way you're hitting it now and you're just trying to play your game? I'm, I'm pretty happy about the way I'm hitting it right now. Um, I, I swing at about 112 miles an hour. Good ball speed is like 165. So I'm carrying it. I, right. I was on the quad 280 yards. It's it's good enough for me. I I've, I've I've tried to work out and get stronger, but you know, there's certain things in my swing that just don't allow me to hit it not, you know, 320 yards. And, and I've talked to my coach Sean Hogan, he works at the Leadbetter Academy. I mean, he's always talked about John, you're let's just be honest, you're not going to be a Dustin Johnson, you know, Bryson DeChambeau. You're going to be like a Luke Donald. Kevin now or you know call more cow kind of golfer where you just you gotta be excellent with your irons and you gotta keep the ball in the fairways and make putts that that's what you gotta do you're not gonna bomb the drive have a wedge shot in and you know it's it's just not my game and I've accepted it I've accepted it in college and I think honestly college golfers hit it further than professional golfers really like I mean you, you got these kids and you know the peak performance of you know, the athletic ability, they're 19, 20 year olds and they don't care about, I mean, they do care about how, how well you score, but their egos are so big that they care about hitting at 320, 330. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and then you look at a lot of the younger guys, they're, they're bombing it like Cameron champ. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of bombers, Matt Wolf yeah. and yeah, you'd be shocked, but I I was, I'm the shortest hitter on my college golf team I was last year. But the best that for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So I kind of learned that in college that you don't need to bomb it to, to win. Does it bother you at all when you play with somebody who does hit it a great distance further than you do? Does it does it bother you to hit second or have to hit twice while they hit once? <laughs> doesn't bother me. I'm more impressed. I'm like, dude, that's insane. Because – my uh, my teammate last year, he was a fifth year transfer, and he's got uh, twelve starts on the Corn Ferry Tour. As he finished second at Q School. Guys, average one twenty five club at speed, just bombs it, effortless swing, absolutely smashes it. And I'm just like, dude, that's impressive. Like, you know, he worked to do that. So I'm right. not I'm not jealous. I'm not I'm not upset right. about it. I'm just I'm impressed. Have you, uh, I know you're on social media on Instagram. We gave out your Instagram handle uh, earlier. Have you been following along with all this stuff going on with Kevin Na and Grayson Murray on social media? <laughs> I actually have been. Um, <laughs> I was like, man, I, I kind of, <laughs> Grayson Murray just got his life ended by Kevin Na. And then he, he, he missed the cut yesterday or two days Again. ago, whatever it was. And I was just like, oh man, he can't. I, I just try to stay away from conflict. I, I you know, 
there's no reason to, to say no. anything. Do you follow along with a lot of what's going on on social, like the Brooks and uh, uh, Bryson drama and all this other stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm up to date with it. It seems like they made up at the the Ryder Cup or whatever it was, but yeah. who knows? Yeah, who it's, knows if it's real or fake? Yeah, it, it's hard to tell. You do. Were, were you as surprised as everybody else was that Phil won the uh, the, the the pack money and not Tiger Woods? The pit money, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. honestly, a little bit. I, I was I, too. Actually, he he was pretty engaging this year, though. He 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 tried. He he did. You know, he said a couple of statements. I remember I was on social media and I saw a post about him saying that, or someone saying like, it's unbelievable that Phil gets this money. And then Phil tweeted out saying like, yeah, but the PGA Tour is using my name and likeliness to to use all this stuff to right. to make their social media better. I was like, yeah makes sense he's got a valid point yeah he's got a valid point yeah it was good to see tiger and uh tiger and charlie playing at the pnc you know i don't i don't think i don't think playing golf is going to be the issue for tiger i think walking 18 36 54 and 72 holes is is where there's going to be an issue if he can play golf again Mm -hmm. yeah actually i went out to the pnc i did a little clinic for the first tee of orlando and then um they gave me the ticket for saturday's round i think or mm-hmm. I, I had one for saturday and sunday and then uh we went to watch tiger and yeah he's just he's limping a little bit when he walks out of that card so i mean tiger's my favorite golfer of all time so i, I would love to see him out there he looked good like, so the golf swing still, looks good in person yeah it looks good i he said he lost speed he's still swinging he said he's swing. someone told me he's swinging at 150 miles an hour Five like one fifteen is about PGA Tour average. You can, Tiger, you, you can work with that. I know you can. I'm swinging at one twelve, you know. And I, he's the greatest golfer of all time. He can, he can figure out one fifteen club head speed and still, still find his way around the golf course. All right. So you, you saw how far he's hitting it. He is still hitting it far enough to compete on the tour. Oh, for sure. I mean, it depends on who you ask. I think so because people say you got to swing at least so and so, but you know. Look at Kevin Na and Kevin Kisner. There's those are two great examples of guys that have been on the PGA Tour for what 10, 10 years now, at least, yeah, making a lot of money, and they're swinging at one twelve. Right, so it can be done. Yes. I don't know if you follow along. I mean, you know, you, you you talk to a lot of guys, and they say they don't read the press clippings, they don't see all this stuff. But uh, PGA Tour dot com ranked you as the number two golfer to watch in the twenty twenty two season. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. So, I I did see that. I'm pretty excited to play on the the Corn Ferry Tour this season, and um, yeah, I, it kind of gives you high expectations for yourself, but you can't look at it that way. I did do that a little bit. That's another thing I learned last summer is just very high expectations for myself from other people, and you can't think about it that way. You just gotta you gotta play your own game, and just you know, I've I've done it my whole college career. Why can't I do that as a professional golfer? Just got to block everything out and just play golf. Do you think about that when you're out there? Do you think about, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to let like, I don't let my coach down. I don't want to let my mom and dad down. I don't. I mean, yeah. does, that, does that stuff enter your mind? It, it so yeah, it, it definitely does a little bit, and I, that was a bit of my an issue last summer that I struggled with is just thinking about letting people down, and that goes back to what I told you about me playing well in college was like, who cares, man. It's not the end of the world. You're you're living a great life. You got to enjoy it. And why are you letting you know golf define everything? It's it's not who I am. You know, it's it's not everything to me. Yeah, it's what you do. Be, I mean, you're a golfer exactly, for sure, but it's not who you exactly. are. There's much more to John Pack than just the guy that plays golf and you know we watch yeah. on TV. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. That's what I need to tell myself more when I'm playing golf. And yeah, because otherwise, you know, listen, we've mental health, uh, rightfully so, has been brought to the forefront lately um, because mm-hmm. it is it, it, anytime it becomes where you feel like you are less of a person or you're less of a uh, of a of a son or or a, or a uh, boyfriend or, or, you know, whatever re- your relationships you have. Anytime you feel like you're less of those things because of your score on the golf course. Yeah, that's that's bad. And that's that's mm-hmm. wrong. You're putting undue pressure Definitely. on yourself, just like you're not a better son or a better boyfriend or a better friend 
because you score well on the golf course. They really, the two have nothing to do with each other. And I'm sure that that's something that you and, and Dr. 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 McCabe have talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's something I'm trying to work on. Um, it's, it's tough, man. It's people think the PGA tour is all happy and, and great, but like, it's a grind. It's your job. You're, you're playing for your money. And, you know, if it doesn't go your way, you, you're worried about, you know, just where your golf game's headed. And like a perfect example was Q school last year or this past fall. And I made it, I three putted my last hole and I was tied for 30. I was tied for like 30th and top 40 gets eight guaranteed starts. And I three putted my last hole and moved to tied for 39th. And it kept going back and forth between 39, 42, 40. And at that moment, I was like, I might not have a job next year. I, I, I won't have any guaranteed starts. I'm going to have to grind out and try to figure something out. I have no, you know, structure. And, you know, I was in a pretty, for one and a half hours, I was like freaking out. And I was like mentally like all over the place. And then, um, I ended up finishing tied for 39th and then getting those eight guaranteed starts, but it's a roller coaster emotionally. Like people don't realize that it's, it's, it's your job and it's your livelihood, but back to what I'm saying, it's also not the only thing that, that defines me. Right. Exactly. It's, no, it's hard to, it's really hard to balance the two in your head. It is because when you're out there, you're out there really, I know you have a caddy standing yeah. there with you, but the truth is you're really all alone out there. I mean, you're the guy yeah. hitting every single shot, whether it's from the exactly. tee or from the fairway or the bunker or the chip shot or the putt, it's all on you. And so it's easy to, to, to kind of get caught up in that and in, in, in the madness. But as far as starts, I know you're starting this week, uh, tomorrow at the MX and you'll play this weekend. How many other PGA tour starts do you have locked up versus having play, having to play corn Ferry uh, events? So, yeah, I, um, I only have, I have this one locked up and then I have, the Memorial and Charles Schwab. So winning the Nicholas award got me into the Memorial and then the Hogan award got me into Charles Schwab. So I'll be playing in those two. Um, and yeah, the rest of the year I'll be playing corn Ferry tournaments unless something magical happens this week. And, you know, you never know. <laughs> you never know. So what, so, so let's say this week goes well, make the cut, mm -hmm. you play some corn Ferry events can you get into more PGA tour events? Cause I, I know I don't, I don't think a lot of people understand exactly how it works. How do you get in to more PGA tour starts? So one way I, the way I got into this one's a little different. There, there's multiple ways you can, there's the Monday qualifier. Um, you can top 10 into a PGA tour event to get into the next week one. Um, and then there's exemptions. So normally I write a letter, and I send it to the tournament director, tell them why I should be getting an exemption to that event. And that's kind of kind of how it works. Um, I got a little lucky on the American Express this week. Um, the CEO of American Express lived in New Jersey. Not only in Jersey, he lived in my block in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And there's like 40 <laughs> houses. So there was a little connection, some networking yeah. for my agent. He did a fantastic job and got me this exemption. And, I mean, a little bit, obviously the resume, you need to have a proper resume and, and right. go off to, to get into these events. So that's kind of how it works. You need a little connection. You need yeah. a good resume. And uh, I sent another letter to Bay Hill. I'm still waiting to hear back from that one or the Arnold Palmer invitation also. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll get into that one. But one thing people won't don't know is that you can't keep bouncing back and forth because in order to earn your, earn your PGA tour card, you got to go through the corn ferry. And you gotta be top twenty-five in the corn ferry money list. So, if I keep taking breaks away from the corn ferry and playing on the PGA Tour, you drop I'm down the list, a, right? Yeah, I'm missing exactly. So, that's uh, that's something I have to think about. Um, obviously, a PGA Tour event, especially the Memorial and Charles Schwab, those are two great events. Kind of hard to miss out. So, I think I'll be playing those two for sure. Right. Now, this is a question that I know we've seen a lot of talk lately. The scores were really super low uh, over in Hawaii. And so now, hey, we are back on the mainland this week. Do you feel, and I know you haven't played these two events per se, but do you feel like the scores are too low? Are the courses being set up too easy? Um, You know, that's that's a tough question because I played in the U.S. Open and, at Wingfoot 
and one guy shot under par. Right. And then I, I haven't really experienced a course where someone shot 25 under or better. You know, I played Rocket Mortgage, I think. I don't think any of the events I played this summer were that low. So it's hard for me to tell, but my coach, Sean Hogan, works with Patrick Reed, and he went to the event two weeks ago in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and he was like, they they set it up extremely easy. Because the way they set it up, thinking it's going to blow 20 miles an hour. Right. And then it does, the wind doesn't blow, and the scores get, you know, you know, if there's 20 miles an hour wind, the score goes from, you know, a good round being eight under to four under. So it, it changes that much. Right. So the wind has a lot. So the weather has a huge, huge and plus oh. they played the ball. I believe they played the ball up in hand the first oh, two really? days. Yeah. And yeah. then it was on the ground the last two days because they had gotten a lot of rain and they were concerned mm -hmm. having some mud balls. So I mean, that makes yeah. a huge difference playing the ball up to be able to wipe it off and preferred lie. So mm -hmm. um, also, I know you signed with TaylorMade. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this morning, I'm headed outside, and the FedEx guy stops and he gets off the truck with this giant box. And I'm like, "What is that?" And I was, I was like, "Yes, yes, sir. I gotta be a tailor-made stealth driver. Oh, These yeah. things are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you've seen it yet, the face is absolutely beautiful. Red, red face, stealth plus. Which now, which which one do you have? Do you have the plus or do you have the regular stealth? I uh, this uh that one you're holding right there the plus with the track on it y yeah so what is so different uh in the stealth drivers i know that they've gone from obviously we were hitting persimmon wood for a while and then we went metal wood and now this is carbon the face is all carbon so what exactly makes it different and what makes it better so uh, they've done more testing than i have taylor made and it's faster it's just the ball speed is higher than the previous sim but to me, visually, it looks really good. The black face, you, people were talking about how the red face, oh, if you see that and you set up to it, it's going to look like you can't really see the red face. And I, personally, I think the red face looks great. But just visually from the top, it looks, I like the black head. It, looks it does really look nice good. from the top. I mean, you can, I mean, it, yeah. it, is, the, it is a good looking driver from the top. For it sure. looks amazing. And then the it's fuel really light. Slight. I can't believe how light it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, the head is supposed to be lighter, but. I think the biggest thing is the feel of the face. You know, it's it's hard to describe the feeling because you know it's just what you feel, and it's like I right. think it's slightly more pingier. If that makes more sense to you, mm -hmm. yeah, it comes off. The sounds a little pingier to me to you to me as well, and I actually like that a lot more than the previous sim too. And I I don't know I I was testing it out. I went to the kingdom on Thursday, last Thursday, and. The numbers were good and the ball flight was way better. And it, it just, it, it's really good. And just wait till you get the woods. The woods are just as good, if not better. So, I don't know. So are you playing it? So, so when, when you tee it tomorrow, you'll have the stealth. You're playing, obviously, the driver. You're playing the three and the five woods as well? I, I have a three wood, a five wood in play, as well as a hybrid. So I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to put the hybrid or five wood into play. Okay. So what exactly makes that determination just exactly what you need as far as trajectory into, into some green? Yeah, so I've, I've never used a five wood or a hybrid. I've always used a two iron, mm -hmm. but there's the windiest it gets is five miles an hour out here, which is nothing. And right. with the green string firm, that two iron, it's, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when my two, two iron price spins at 2,500, where the hybrid spins at almost 4,000. So obviously if i get it more up in the air with more spin it's going to land into the green softer and the reason only reason i use the two irons if it's too windy and i need it off the tee so right the hybrid just gives me more you know height into these greens and more spin to make it land softer right but uh these these new tailor make clubs they really every year Seemed to revolutionize. I, I I didn't have a sim two. I had a sim. I had not mm -hmm. uh, played the sim two. My son plays a sim two, but yeah. um, I just these the the to see the how quick everybody has adapted mm -hmm. the stealth is unbelievable. You know, Tiger's usually kind of one of the last ones to put a new new club in the bag. He really likes yeah. what he likes. He likes the old faithful, which I just you know it's completely understandable. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who hadn't practiced a lot, 
obviously with his health. And then to be able to show up at PNC and drove, drive the ball the way he did was really unbelievable. And I know that uh, Rory's playing Abu Dhabi this week. He was putting in play. DJ was putting in play. I've seen so many other players playing it. And so I saw that you had it. It's, 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 it says a lot about the product, how quick mm-hmm. it's being adapted to and put into play yeah, by guys who sure. are not just guys who are tailor-made staffers, but guys who are not, who think it's a better product. So, yeah, I'm here at the American Express, and during the practice round, like, there's a lot of free agent guys with the driver, and a lot of them are putting it in play right now. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's good stuff. I'm I'm excited to take it to the range. I won't yeah. hit it anywhere near as straight and as far as you hit it. But you know what? It's, I, I got a buddy of mine that thinks when he buys a club, he's going to hit it like a tour pro. I'm like, no, 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 no. They, they, you, you didn't buy a swing. You bought a club. It's a, it's different. There's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a big big difference there. Uh, before we let you go, John, we do a thing here on the podcast called the Emergency Nine. I'm going to ask got you it. a quick nine questions, and you just give me the first thing that comes to mind. Got it. So here we go. Hole one. What is the best shot you have ever hit in your life? Uh, driver off the deck at the national championship. It made Sports Center top 10. It was number seven, 310 yards. I hit it to a one and a half feet. Oh my God. Yeah. Best shot of my life. Wow. All right. Number two, would you rather win now? Ready? If you could just handpick one tournament the Masters, the Open, the Open Championship, the PGA, or the players? Definitely the Masters. The I think Masters. everyone everyone says that. Yeah. That's the Masters. All right. Uh, yeah. You're uh, you're listening to music on the golf course. You got rock, hip hop, or a little country, or something else. Um, pro- probably a little chill house or EDM kind of something just you know okay. chill and vibey. Okay, I got that. Uh, hole four. What shows are you binge watching right now? You guys travel. You're on the road all the time. What are you binge watching? Um, right now, no, I'm. I actually, one of my buddies told me about the Epstein docu- documentary. Pretty, uh-huh. pretty messed up, but like, yeah. I didn't know anything about it, and he told me, and I was like, I got kind of hooked to that, and I was just like, man, I can't believe that actually happened. I so know that's that's something I'm watching right now. I got a couple of buddies told me to watch Yellowstone, and everybody loves Ted Lasso. Have you watched either one of those? I someone told me about that one as well. I gotta watch Ted Lasso. Yeah. I, I didn't. I haven't gotten to that. <laughs> All right, uh, number five, uh, cardio or weight training? What's your uh, what's your go to? Well, weight training. I hate weight. cardio. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the player you are most nervous to be paired with on the PGA Tour? Probably Tiger Woods. Okay, come on, you got to give me another <laughs> yeah, one. Okay. You, you got to um, give me somebody else. <laughs> maybe Dustin Johnson. I've I've seen him, and he's just got this like aura around him. Like he's just like got this. Yeah, I don't know. He's just he's pretty intimidating. Especially have you been paired with anybody yet that, that that was like you know holy crap i can't believe i'm paired with this guy i'm playing golf with this guy um no not yet not yet not yet not yet all right uh instagram twitter facebook or tiktok instagram instagram for sure okay so you know mm-hmm. he's not john's not looking to fight with guys on twitter so keep on moving no, uh, no. <laughs> uh you're on the road you ready to go to a restaurant or you in a door dash it to the hotel uh restaurant restaurant you're gonna go eat yeah. all right uh, and last but not least, are you an Amazon guy or are you going to go get in the car and go get it yourself? Amazon. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's, it's too easy. easy man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so way simple. too easy. I have the account. You know, we gotta, I got to use it. You got Prime. You might as well use it. I mean, it really is crazy. You can order something. Some stuff comes that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, it really is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But uh, what's your schedule moving forward? I know we'll see you tomorrow and this weekend. At the at the Amex, and then when will we see you again? So, hopefully, you know, I sent an exemption letter to the API, so waiting to hear back from that. So, I'd love to play in that. You know, Orlando's like a second home to me. I moved there when I was a sophomore in high school, so love to play in that. But playing Corn Ferry events, going to Panama after this, then Bogota and Colombia, then um, Tampa after that. Wow, so a lot of travel on the schedule, but yep. uh, you never know, man. This week, you could catch lightning in a bottle this week, and none of it will matter. You'll be playing more PGA exactly. Tour events before you know it. Exactly. Good deal. You never know. Well, John, thank you so much for your time, man. Best of luck to you this week. Hopefully, you uh, fulfill those expectations of the number two player to watch on the uh, PGA Tour in 2022. Good luck this week. Good luck moving forward. And uh, thanks so much for coming on the Stripe Show podcast. Yeah, thanks so much, Froggy. Enjoyed it. Appreciate it, man.